So what we have behind me here is something that uh, if you watch the how to tune the guitar video should look awfully familiar. Um, it's the musical alphabet and it has the 12 different notes uh, of it. So just to review that a little bit here, um, there's seven different natural notes before it starts to repeat over. And by natural, I just mean that they don't have a sharp or a flat on them. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, that's the seventh, and then it repeats over again. So it will just continue till we run out of frets, essentially. Um, or if you're on a piano, till you run out of keys. Um, but nonetheless, the pattern just keeps continuing in both directions. So before A, if I were to move this way, it's the same thing here. I'd go to G sharp, A flat, and then eventually to G. So you wanna be familiar with that just to start understanding how scales are constructed a little bit. Now, let's take a look at how this looks on the guitar, and we're gonna do it just by going up the A string. So, let me grab my guitar here. And so, if I start on the A string, okay, uh, I play the A open. Essentially, that's starting right here. And then what we have here going from A to the A sharp or B flat. Now, that particular note has two note names. Again, um, the accidentals, the sharps and the flats, will always have two. Sharp just simply means to raise a note one half step, and flat simply means to lower a note one half step. So looking at this here, A, if I raise it a half step, gives me A sharp. B, if I lower it a half step, gives me B flat. So A is open on the guitar here, just the fifth string open. B is at the second fret. So if I take B, and lower it one fret, okay? That note right there gives me B flat. Likewise, if I take A and raise it one fret, and then play it here, okay? A sharp, same as B flat. So it's just a matter of perspective. So when I go down the string, just in a line, um, this pattern becomes very apparent. So let's do it once here. A open, A sharp, or B flat, same note, B, okay, and I'm just doing this with my first finger just so you have a pretty clear view here. So B, second fret, if I go up one more fret, B's and C's are always right next to each other, and you see that right there. It's the same thing too if you look at a piano. Um, you'll notice that the B and the C, there's no black key in between them, no accidental in between them. So if I play the B, just go up one more fret, that takes me to the C. C, C sharp, D flat, same note. D, D sharp, E flat, E, F, same thing, E's and F's always right next to one another. After F, F sharp or G flat. Okay, so that's at the ninth fret there. If I go up one more, uh, G, and then G sharp, A flat, and then finally back to A and things would cycle over again as we're repeating through it. So when I look at one string, uh, it's pretty easy to follow that through. Now we could do that on the sixth string as well, so we just have to remember that the sixth string starts at E, so we're starting here. So if I play the sixth string open, okay, then I go up one fret, okay? That's what we call a half step, by the way, when we go up one fret. So open to one, being one fret. So E, F, F sharp, G flat, okay. G, G sharp, A flat, A. Okay. Now where it gets a little bit more complex sometimes is seeing where things are when we cross strings. Here's what I mean. Let's start from the A here. So I'm gonna play the A, A sharp, B flat. B, C, 
Now I'm gonna cross strings and I wanna continue going from the C to the C sharp. So if I stay on the sixth string, it's very obvious. I just go up one more fret, here's C, here's C sharp. But when I cross strings, I have to know where C sharp is on the fifth string. And in this case, C sharp is actually back at the fourth fret. So if I want to continue the pattern while moving from one string to the next, it's very important that I have some landmarks on the string or know where that C sharp is because it's not just going to be down one more um, string. So if I go A, A sharp, B flat, B, C, I have to shift to the fourth position to play the C sharp, C sharp, T flat, D, D sharp, B flat, E. And then same thing here, if I'm at the E uh, and I want to go up to the F, I can't just move to the string, I need to know where F is on this string here. So when we're moving from one string to the next or doing string crossings, it becomes a little bit more tricky to follow the pattern through. But when you're looking down a string, you know, starting from open and just moving from one fret to the next, um, it's really, I think, fairly obvious uh, that every time we go down a fret, we just go to the next note. So if we're at C, go down, a fret, and I misspoke there, go up a fret, moving this way essentially, so I'm at C, going up where the pitch gets higher. So C, C sharp, D flat, that um, it's fairly obvious that I'm just following that linear order that's written out there. Now, how does that apply to scales and why are we taking a look at that? Let me take the guitar off here. The reason why we're looking at this is because all the scale is, is a uh, pattern, basically. A way to order these notes in a way that musically makes sense to us. And what we're starting to talk here a little bit is um, about music theory. Um, I always like this term, you know, when you think about what theory is, uh, theory isn't fact, right? Theory is just uh, uh, an idea that, that can't necessarily be proven. So when we talk about this, it really is, is true for, for music. Uh, in the world, there's sound. And over time, um, musicians have ordered that sound in ways that sound um, good, I guess, to us. And in some cases, maybe not good to us. Um, so music theory just tries to look at how, um, how artists and musicians and people have ordered music and the notes that, that we're hearing. So music theory, we're just trying to explain how uh, historically we've kind of ordered things. And one of those ways that we've ordered things is in scales. Now again, we're talking about the building blocks of music. So we will see when you start learning other artists' music and start writing your own stuff, you'll see that you know, you'll use the pentatonic scale a lot, you'll use the blues scale a lot. And musically, you've probably heard of this at some point, the major scale, okay? I guess fully we'd call it the major diatonic scale. Um, what that is, is a specific pattern of whole and half steps. Now, you're probably already familiar with this. If you've ever sang uh, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, that's a major scale, okay? And if you've listened to The Sound of Music, you know, obviously very, very much based on uh, the major scale, that song at least here. So. When we're writing this out, uh, we use a curved line like this to show a half step, okay? And a half step's just moving from one note uh, to the very, very next note that comes right after it. So from B to C is a half step. To show a whole step, we'll use a V, okay? So it's kind of skipping over that note that's in between here. C to D is a whole step. Now, let's look at a C major scale. So in a C major scale, um, there's no uh, sharps or flats, which is, which is very convenient. And um, it's because of the pattern that we're using. So I'm gonna write out a C scale here. So I'm gonna start with C. We'll go to D, E, F, G, a, B, C, okay? So I kind of wrote it out 
you know, with some interesting spacing in between here, and we'll get into why that is. Uh, so I guess first, let's start at C, the root of the scale, the note that the scale is named after. So C, if I move from C to D, we'll notice that that's a whole step, right? Because we're skipping over the C sharp, D flat. So we're going up two frets, basically. Uh, if C is at, let's say on the fifth string, C's at the third fret. So to get to D, I have to skip over the fourth fret and play the fifth fret. So C's at the third fret, D's at the fifth fret. I'm skipping over the fourth fret. That's a whole step, okay? So same thing from D to E. And again, I'm just gonna kind of continue thinking about it on one string for right now. So D was at the fifth fret. When I go to E on that same string, fifth string, I would have to go up a whole step to get to the E, okay? So that takes me from the fifth fret, skip over the sixth fret, I'm at the seventh fret now. But E to F, of course, because E's and F's are always right next to each other, that's only a half step. Okay, so E to F, half step. So E's at the seventh fret, F is at the eighth fret. I'm gonna continue this pattern, F to G, and of course there, I'm skipping over a fret. So F's at the um, eighth fret here, and I'm gonna skip over the ninth fret. That brings me to the 10th fret. G is at the 10th fret of the fifth string, whole step above, uh, whole step above F. When I go from G to A, same thing. Uh, G's at the 10th fret, A's at the 12th fret. I had to skip over you know, the G sharp, the A flat, so I'm skipping over a fret, whole step away from one another, G to A. A to B, same thing. Uh, I'll go down here, A going to B, I'm skipping over the A sharp, B flat, whole step away from one another. And the last one here, B to C, they're always right next to one another, of course, B's and C's, always a half step away. So that ends up being a half step. Now, what's interesting is that when we talk about a major scale, what we're really talking about is this pattern, this pattern of whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, okay? So when we start on C, this happens to be the order of notes that we get. And that's why a lot of times we might start by learning a C major scale because conveniently there ends up being no sharps or no flats on it. But really what defines a major scale is this pattern of whole steps and half steps. So if you just remember whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, that's the pattern that produces a major scale. Now on the guitar, uh, because of the way the neck of the guitar is laid out, when you learn a finger pattern, a finger pattern for a major scale, you've essentially learned, uh, in, in this case, a pattern that goes whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half through a series of string crosses. So if you take that and you shift that down, just starting with a different note, but play the same finger pattern, you're going to get, uh, again, the result of a major scale, but it may not be a C major scale. At this point, it might be uh, an A major scale or whatever note you happen to start on or make the root of, of that scale. So let's try something here. Let's erase, let's erase that top part, that C major scale. Okay. So now all we're left with all we're left with is the pattern that form the major scale. And let's pick a note, uh, a different note to start with, and let's spell a different major scale here. Um, so I don't know, let's start with D here. So I'm gonna start on D, okay? And we're gonna spell what notes are in a D major scale. So I take the note D, that's my starting point, and I go a whole step up from D. So look in here, if I go a whole step, I'm skipping over from D to E. Okay, so that's D. Right here is E. So the second note of a D major scale would be E. 
if I take the E and uh, go up now another whole step, okay, so here's E. Now remember, I'm going up a whole step, so F is only a half step away. I'm going up a whole step from E to F sharp G flat. Now, this leads into a little question. What do I call this next note? Do I call it F sharp or do I call it G flat? Well, there's a simple answer to it, and it's uh, just always follow this rule. When you're spelling a scale, keep the alphabet. So alphabetically, after E comes F. So after this E here, we need some kind of F, okay? It's not gonna be F without a sharp because that'd only be a half step away. So we're gonna call it the F sharp as opposed to G flat. So when you're spelling these scales, uh, never have two of the same letter names in a row. If you did uh, E and then G flat, you're skipping over F, so we wouldn't want to do that, but that would lead us when we go a half step G flat to G, two letter names in a row here as well. So speaking of which here, we're at F sharp. I need to go up a half step to get the next note of the scale. So up a half step from F sharp here is G. So the fourth note of a G major scale, excuse me, of a D major scale is G, okay? So I have that G there. To get the fifth note, I go up a whole step from the G, whole step up from G, obviously skipping over G, A flat. That gives me the A right there. Okay. To get the sixth note of the scale, I need to go a whole step up from A. I'm just gonna jump down here. Here's A, whole step up from it, obviously skipping over the A sharp, B flat. So it takes me right to B. At the B, to get the Next note, I have to go up a whole step. So again, we get something a little interesting here because I'm not gonna go to C, that's only a half step away. Uh, in order to go up a whole step here, B, I gotta skip over the C because that's a half step. So it's gonna take me to C sharp, D flat. And again, just to quickly ask you, what note will we call that? Will we call that a C sharp or will we call that a D flat? And of course, the correct answer is we call it a C sharp. And again, the reason why is because we just always keep the alphabet. After B comes some type of C. And in this case, it's the whole step up from B, that note's gonna be a C sharp. So if we did everything correct then, when we get to the seventh note of the scale, the C sharp, when we come right back around, half step, half step up from the C sharp, should be the note right next to it, the D. And we've successfully started and ended on the same note. So this is how you could go through and start on any note. You could start, you know, if you wanted to, you could start on C sharp. If you wanted to, you could start on E. If you wanted to, you could start on B flat and try to keep that, um, try to keep that pattern the whole way through, the ma major scale pattern. But the reason why we're really going through this isn't necessarily to cover everything about music theory. Hopefully as you advance and continue to study, uh, you'll get interested enough in how music works, how music is pieced together, and begin to start studying music theory. But the important part for this lesson is just understanding uh, that a scale is really a specific pattern. So anytime we're talking about the major scale, we're talking about a pattern of whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. And then regardless of what note we start on, it always follows that if it's a major scale. And then we can figure out what notes are in that scale. So if you're gonna practice a C scale, as we do in the videos, practice that C scale. But also grab out a pen and paper and say, okay, now I'm gonna start on the note A and try to go through, try to write out what those notes would be. Now the pattern, the left-hand pattern is gonna be exactly the same. So if you've learned the C major scale, it will already feel comfortable underneath your fingers. The part that you're learning are the different note names throughout the guitar. So this is another strategy to help kind of keep you engaged learning the neck of the guitar. And again, wanna reiterate, uh, a lot of guitarists may not know the neck of the guitar and they might just get comfortable reading tablature. Um, but that will only take you so far after a while. 
the more that you know about the neck of the guitar, how notes are written, uh, the more creative you'll be able to be and the more you'll be able to make connections on the guitar, connecting certain ideas that you know to other ideas that you're learning.